we only learned about it in November of 2024. And we learned about it because MSR put it out. Wait, you, you learned about it when in 2024? February. Oh, oh I, sorry. I, 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 not, I said not what? MSR. <laughs> not MSR. Um, the, the, the unit put out a letter to say that there is uh, an infrastructure option. Okay? So as the opposition, when we started asking questions, the answers weren't matching up. There was no regulations for the infrastructure program, meaning there's no law. There's a thing that says there is an infrastructure program. But how the infrastructure program works it does not. So I told you, if a person is going to make a donation of $100,000, person's approved, the money goes into the CIP unit, and it's only once that they've received the money that they issue the certificate. Uh -huh. How does it work with the infrastructure program? There's nothing written to say at what point does the CIP unit approve the citizenship. Okay? Now, Ernest said that Galaxy, listen to this, is going to put forward 100 million U.S. dollars. And that 100 million U.S. dollars is going to be used for infrastructure, housing, roads, etc. Up until today, nobody has told us what housing projects, how many houses. Nobody has told us how many roads and where the roads are. Nobody has told us what the costing is going to be so we can know if we're getting value for the money. Okay? But what we do know is that Galaxy was made a developer. We don't even know how they were made a developer. There's nothing in the regulations that says, like in the real estate program, where it outlines how a person becomes a, an approved real estate project. There's nothing in the regulations that says how you become an approved developer under the infrastructure program. Okay? And Mr. Emanuel, it is alleged and not denied that Galaxy was given 7,000 files at $100,000. That means it's 700 million US dollars to do $100 million of work. We're also finding out that Galaxy has already started putting applications in, but we don't know what's happening right now. You asked a question while we were off air. What's the connection with St. Kitts and what's going on with the MSR case? So the MSR case, first of all, is a gentleman who was brought to St. Kitts and Nevis during COVID. He's a filmmaker. Okay. And because of COVID, they put in protocols that he can continue making movies. So when he did his first movie, they said, hey, um, you know, you could do the CIP program and you can earn money and you can make more films here. He says, great. So they get him approved. He buys a hotel in St. Kitts to become his headquarters. He, fit, he makes two more movies using his own money. And the government gave him 400 files at $250,000 per file to go out and make his money back. So he goes out to try to sell, and he can't sell. He then finds out that the government had already approved a project with Galaxy for $175,000. Less than what he... Less than what he had. Mm -hmm. And that they were selling it at less than $175,000. So he goes public in St. Kitts and complains. So said, look, I've gone to the government people. I've gone to everybody to complain. This is not right. So Timothy Harris, the former prime minister, and Les Can, the CEO of the CIP unit in St. Kitts, and now the CEO of Galaxy, sued him. And when they sued him, he then used that because he was a U.S. citizen to apply for what's called a RICO case. So RICO is an interesting piece of legislation. Governments around the world were having difficulty in shutting down um, mafia people. Because when they earned money illegally, unlawfully, they washed their money. You've heard that term? Yeah. They create different businesses. So the RICO case says, no, 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 no. If the money was originally bad, 
even if you put the money and use it to get a legitimate business, the business becomes illegal. Do you understand that? So if a man uses his money to buy a car, if the money uses the money to buy a house, the money uses the money to create a new business, if in fact the, the money he originally got was deemed to be illegal, mm -hmm. all of those businesses are seized. Fair enough? If the passports are being sold below the legal amount, so the, the country stay in St. Lucia, 100,000 or 200,000. That's what we call by statute, by law. If you sell it for less, you are breaking the law. Yeah. It's an unlawful act. Yeah. And if that money that you obtained unlawfully goes through an international banking system, it becomes money laundering. And now you're in breach of international law. So how he was able to apply the case in the U.S. is because the banks that were processing all the fees are in the U.S. We're called correspondent okay. banks. So when you pay your bill online, right, the money goes through those U.S. accounts. They're the ones that are doing all the conversions. If you use your credit card abroad in U.S. dollars and you're going to pay in E.C. dollars, they're the ones who do all Process. the processing. It's the called processing. a correspondent bank. Okay. Okay. So he then presented to the U.S. courts to say, I have evidence to show that they were unlawfully selling these passports at an illegal price, and that this was a scam with the government of St. Kitts, and that the money has now gone through the banking system. So he subpoenaed, he um, applied to the courts to force the, 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 the banks to give him the information. So all the banks now have been properly served, Three of the banks have already given him all the information, and he's waiting until the end of this month, from what I understand, to get the remaining amount of money from the Bank of America, which would be the biggest. So, so this is between MSR and St. Kitts. So can you connect it with St. Lucia now? Because persons would ask, but what does that have to do with St. Lucia? So Galaxy now is in St. Lucia. Uh -huh. And other? Uh, no, St. Lucia and St. Kitts. Okay, and St. Kitts, okay. Les Can now, who was the CEO, is now the CEO of of Galaxy. Okay. He used to be the CEO of CIP. What, what Claude Emmanuel is here in St. Lucia, Mr. Can used to be that in St. Kitts. And that he now realizes that the infrastructure program in St. Lucia and also the real estate program, the same thing has been happening. That these products have been sold on the price. So in his investigation in St. Kitts, right, he found that out. Now, persons have not understood or misunderstood when he said, hey, come to Washington, D.C., you heard that, right? Yes. Come and see you the information said, I have. You said that... Um... Right? Come to Washington, D.C., meet my lawyers, meet the law enforcement agents, see the evidence that's here, okay, and come and join me. Join me to try to get the money back from Galaxy. So here's where this thing now really starts to get very bad. In the case of St. Kitts, there was a prison project. The government of St. Kitts gave Galaxy 5,500 files at $175,000, which is about a billion dollars worth of, of citizenships, to build a $50 million prison. That makes sense to you? And now, the money is gone. 26,000 passports have been sold. Yes? And there's no prison. And the government of St. Kitts, instead of causing the money to go into an escrow account, allowed Galaxy to collect the money directly. And that's exactly now what has happened in St. Lucia. On the infrastructure program, Emmanuel says 7,000 files were given to them. They're already processing them. And Galaxy is collecting all the money themselves. In addition to the money of the 100,000, Galaxy put out in a press statement, they put it out, that they're also collecting the fees. And what Martinez is saying to St. Lucia men, that money is gone. They duped you. So come with me. Let us file a class action suit against the bank that they're using to recover the money. Now, if the government does not go to Washington, D.C., it can only be one of two things. They're arrogant. 
Nobody's going to tell them what it is. Or they are colluding. The part of the CIP program, guys, that solutions have not picked up on. I want to explain that to you. There's a thing called an agent. There's about 12 or so, maybe more, companies, law firms in St. Lucia that are designated as agents. They're the ones when the applications come in, they receive the applications, they send the applications to the CIP unit. They get paid $3,000 US per unit. So if there's only 700 files, it's 700 files times 3,000, that's what, um, $2.1 million thereabout. Okay? But if you have 7,000 files, that's 21 million. That's a million, US yeah. 21, I want to tell you the number, 21 million US dollars. 14,000 files is 42 million or 112 million dollars EC. If I could, hold on, if I could quickly just dumb it down for those folks listening. And let me answer this question first. If you were in, if you were in the government's shoes, would you, would you go to D.C., number one? And then number two, for those, for those listening, again, and correct me if I'm wrong, let's just say, you know, someone, someone, in, someone in your neighborhood punches your friend, and your friend says, yo, Shas, come with me, you know, because this guy just came and this guy just punched me in the face. And we have evidence that he probably wants you, to you know, You know what I mean? Like, but, but nothing, no proof. That right. You just like, talk. would you... Bruce. <laughs> because that's oh, okay. what it seems like, because I just got a question like you, that. You know what I mean? Like, because if I, if I dumb it down for those so listening... So I understand. So let me get the question. So first of all, what, what you think people are saying, and maybe what you might even believe, that's yes. not a bad thing, is where's the evidence? Yes, where is it? Because you... You said a lot, and and but it still sounds like a case we've sent kids, and it doesn't. That's really what I'm saying. Belong to Saint Lucia, but yet. But they, but, but you want support. backup. Yes, like it's like it needs backup. So like someone so give you. So remember what I said to you in the beginning. Saint Lucia is already in the in in the citizenship by investment program. Yeah. Remember when I said that? Well, well yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. And yes. why did I say that? Because it's the same product. We're all competing against each other. Okay. So okay. by St. Lucia allowing Galaxy to undersell in the marketplace, okay, is also causing economic harm to him in St. Kitts. But when you say allow, like mm -hmm. allow, I mean, that's Galaxy's a grown man. Galaxy can do what so, Galaxy wants. So no one has to allow, no, you know. No, 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 no. No. I listened to Hilaire okay. carefully. Come and talk about real estate and commission and everything else. Okay. That is all, excuse my French, crap. That's a con artist speaking to you. Okay? Because the price of the citizenship is by law. If you own an apartment, mm -hmm. okay, Slim? Mm -hmm. And you want to cut a deal, the only person you have to ask to do that is who? You. Me? Yeah. yeah. This is a state asset, citizenship. It's published, it's published the price. You have no negotiation. Yeah. It says you shall collect $100,000. So this, this, wait a second, this nonsense that ministers and prime ministers want to say, oh, they have no control. So why have it? Why have the law? You are in breach of the law, and it's because you're in the breach of the law is going to get us in trouble. Because international law will say that the money, if you, if you get 90000 if you get 80000 it means that you are broken the law. And because you've broken the law, it means the money you obtained was unlawful. It's illegal. It's fraud. And then when that money goes through the banking system, it becomes money laundering. So this nonsense that they're saying, oh, I don't know what the private sector people are doing. No, you have an obligation. You said, and by law, that you're going to sell it for 100000 or you're going to sell it for 200000 you and the system is to know that you collect the 200,000. There's no excuse. But you have to ask the question. When you say it's $100,000 for the infrastructure. Now remember I said to you, we have a donation for 100,000. Yeah. Okay? 
So when the people say, oh, I'm doing it because I want to help the people of St. Lucia, that's also not true. Because if you're selling the infrastructure program for 100000 and allowing Galaxy to take the money, why would you not, and you're having to let Galaxy sell $700,000 worth of files to get 100000 why wouldn't you just use the donation program you have and you, and you control the money? You can build as many houses as you want, you can build as many roads. So you're saying this is not being done? So you're saying that we are the ones breaking the law and not Galaxy? So no, 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 no. You're saying that Galaxy and the government have colluded. Okay, so it's together. Correct. So how is it going to help? If, so, if that's the case, how is it going to help us? by collaborating with MSR Media to take down Galaxy. Because MSR is giving you the benefit of the doubt. MSR is saying you didn't collude. MSR is saying that Galaxy fooled you. Galaxy f promised to give you $100 million. They're not going to give you the $100 million. So at the end of the day, Galaxy did what they did over there and is already executed. And he's saying that like, it, it's in the process kind of here. So no, it's not like, in the yo, process. They're actually doing it right now. They're selling. Well, in the process, it's, okay. it's happening. So, and, so it's and, like and so what he's saying to you, I can give you the evidence to show you that you were duped. I can show you what they did in St. Kitts. So then, then let's fix it. Then if, if you can prove then I was duped, I was fooled. So you're saying because you're now showing me that I was fooled, I should support you and take them down. Absolutely. Because if you were duped, you were fooled. You were conned. Okay? You should, be, uh, you should be upset. And if you're the government of St. Lucia, you want to tell me about, what's it called? Vaccines. Two and a half million dollars. Yeah. Of which I told you where the money is. Yeah. And you have a situation now where you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. You'd have thought, boy, they, they would be anxious to get, go get the money. And he's saying to you, because I have gotten access to the bank account in details, yes? I know where the money is. I know exactly what has happened. I know what Galaxy has done. And I can get the money back. Now, he goes, I'm going to go and get the money anyway. But my job would be made substantially easier in the court case if the countries are also part of the case. So if you ask the government of St. Lucia, where's the money? We've asked that question, WTF, right? Where's the funds? How many times have you asked that question? You had Ernest Hilaire here on your show. Where's the money? How, yeah, much money, money. Is in the, how much money is in the escrow account? Okay. How much money has Galaxy already collected? How much money has Galaxy given the government on the infrastructure program? No answers are forthcoming. Zero. And so this is why, again, what I'm going to say to the public of St. Lucia. If, in fact, that Galax, uh, the government of St. Lucia is not prepared to cooperate, and I think that there's a lot of motivation as to why they don't want to, I would love to see a report that tells me and tells us of the agents that we have here in St. Lucia. How many Galaxy files has each one of those agents um, facilitated? Because, because the rumor on the street is that the vast majority are being done by Thaddeus Antoine. Now, I'm not here to cast aspersions on people's character. But before the election, Thaddeus was renting a little hole. Now he's bought an office, driving an M6, his wife driving an M3, okay? Other staff members are driving an, an, an M1. All right? My boy is living large. The <laughs> wait, 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 wait. And all I'm saying to you oh, cool is, cool cool I'm just saying to you, ah, hold on, hold on, go ahead, hold on, go ahead, go ahead, stop, five way, you know, ah, go for it over yourself, go for it over yourself, okay, remember, 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 this is the same man that when Ernest was caught up in the Rover Gate, went on TV, not my words, you know, not my words. To justify what Ernest did, and people don't still understand what Ernest did. Ernest used his position as the high commissioner to take a car that he purchased to put it in the name of the high commission. The question was, who gave him permission to do that? Right, but we know, we're not going to go no, into that. No, right no, 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 it's right important. Now. Yes. So, so, and then who gave him permission to g put it back in his name? That's what the issue is. And the court case that was taking place was a subpoena 
a request, an order by the court for him to come to the court to provide the information to show how he did that. Okay? Now, his good friend, who is his lawyer, not only is he his best friend, he's his lawyer, goes on Timothy Polion's show and says, but Tim, what's the problem? This is no different than going down to Point Seraphim, <laughs> going to Columbia Emeralds, okay? A person has a ticket, and you use that person's ticket in order to get a discount. So the person has a discount card, and all you did is you applied that person's discount card, right, to the car. That's unlawful. The person purchasing the goods at Columbia Emeralds, their ticket needs to be the same person. And when people are allowed to do that, that's breaking the law. Now, it may be habit here in St. Lucia, but it's, guess what? It's unlawful. Right. It's unlawful. And so for a man to be able to do that, it, t it tells you there's a concern. But I want people to understand. The collusion, you have to ask, is there proper motivation? What does Galaxy get? What does the government get? What do the people get? So where's the houses? Where's the roads? Wait a second. Yeah. Wait a second. Where's the hotel? Have you been down to, to, to canals? Nothing. I hear. In fact, the only thing that they have done is they've destroyed the mangrove. That's the only thing that they've left behind for us. So we, if people are all of a sudden raising red flags, who is the media? So the one media that is prepared to carry the story. One, you now over the weekend want to threaten to sue that media person? Come on, people. Come on. All right, um, boy, with that being said, let us, let us get to, to, to wrap wrapping up things up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> go ahead, Kiki. No, I'm going to allow you to wrap it up. Ah, all right. Um, um, say that I'm asking questions about questions and <laughs> so. Um, we, we, we're talking about political ambitions now, you know, because, uh, you know, the, the, the ruling government, they have another couple years in there. Um, you've been politi political leader for the UWP for some time now, um, and speaking to succession of the party, do you have plans at all to step down anytime soon, um, to make way for new leadership? What's your, what's, your, what's your thoughts on, on that? So I'm very proud of the fact that I'm, I've always allowed anybody who wants to contest me to contest. Okay. Um, the only times that we've not allowed a person to contest is the year leading into the election. Okay? Mm -hmm. That was what we did in 2021. Mm -hmm. um, um, I really hope that somebody can replace me. And I see a lot of new talent coming up that given some experience, I think that they would be very capable of, of replacing Alan Shastny. Ultimately, I'm here at the wishes of the members of my party and the general public. So we constantly do polls. If we see, like Biden, yeah. you know, that the writing is on the wall. I, I hope I wouldn't take as long as Biden to bow out. The great thing for me, I like, and I want to say to everybody, I, I don't need this. Yeah, actually, my life gets a whole lot better by not being in politics. A lot better. More time with my kids, more time to do the things I want to do. All the businesses I've set aside, my own personal ambitions. And persons ask me, why are you doing, what, what, what do you, what's your motivation to do this? And I think that that answer came even clearer the night of the election um, in 2021. Um, I was rushed to a, a car accident, a friend of mine, and um, her and her mother and her son were in the, in the car accident, involved in the car accident. So that's where I spent my afternoon. Um, eventually, the mother died, and I knew how close they were. So I was at St. Jude's Hospital. The x-ray machine was not working, and we had to rush to get a different x-ray machine to see if he had any internal bleeding. So I didn't leave St. Jude's Hospital until about midnight. And I remember at around 8 o'clock or so at night, sitting in the waiting room, and was watching the results on TV. I said, boy, the Lord spoke to me. He said, Alan, there are more important things than politics and elections. Okay? That's a process we had to go through. And I want to say to you, I have dedicated and I have given my life to the Lord. 
I have. And I've said, the Lord has been so good to me. The amount of times I can look back where I could have died in an accident, something else could have happened to me, something could have happened to my wife. Recently, I went through that experience. My father, I went through that experience. My mom, I've gone through that experience. My parents are 89 years of age. Both of them are very coherent. Two beautiful kids. I have a beautiful wife. I have a great life in comparison to a lot of people. And I'm not going to take that for granted. That's what the Lord gave me. Okay? Well, and so I feel an obligation as long as there is an opportunity to change the lives of people in St. Lucia, I'm going to dedicate myself to that. But it also means that whatever decision the Lord has for me, if I'm not to be in politics anymore, then I won't be. That's what it is. That's All what right. it is, my brothers. Right. So the answer to that question is the Lord will let me know in due time whether I'm to continue with this or not to continue with this. Um, I have learned so much in being in opposition because I've, my whole tone has changed. Because I'm now, I, I'm, I'm here today as a leader of the opposition, but you're asking me some questions about being the political leader. It's a very clear difference between the two. The leader of the opposition is actually an official part of the government. My job is not to oppose. My job is to ask opposing or present opposing views. My job is to ask questions. My job is to ascertain that the, th the truth is being told and that processes are being followed. That's what my job is. But I don't question policies that the government makes. That's their prerogative. Okay? My job is to make sure that they're making the right choices and that what they've promised that they're going to deliver on, that they do. Okay. Okay? So that's why on this CIP program, we have not even touched what's going on with the halls of justice. Well, right? we'll have, to, we'll have right? to have you back for what's, sure. The, what's going on with St. Jude's? What's going on with HIA Airport? What just to, you know, Richard just came and said he's going to eat his vomit because now the company that he vil villainized, Fresh Start, he now says they're great. Now, so you, you villainized them and you said that, that Fresh Start was associated with Guy Joseph, right? So if now you've eaten your vomit, but the vomit I want Richard Frederick to eat is not his vomit. I want him to eat the vomit that he has caused the people of St. Lucia, which is what? Before the elections, um, Fresh Start was doing Tavern and Shock at a fixed price. And so they were selling the lands for $9. Because of the stop and now the impact of inflation, the price has gone to $14. The vomit I want him to eat is a difference in the price. Don't come and tell me that you're sorry. You made allegations, false allegations, vile, vicious allegations, that now is costing the persons who are going to buy the land almost $25,000 on each lot. That's what I want him to eat. Who's going to pay for the cost overruns on Rodney Bay Road? Okay? Who is going to pay for the, what's going on at St. Jude's? Because we were told at St. Jude's that there was corruption. Three years. Nothing. Nothing. And that's where we as a St. Lucians now need to start saying, in order for a democracy to work, we must participate. You cannot just get your news in 90 seconds and trust that. You must dig deeper. This is our country. Nobody is going to care about our democracy more than us. And so there has to be a change in people's attitude. This idea, I'm not going to vote. I, I look at young people and say, you're not going to vote? But you vote. I said, no. I said, you vote. Whoever wins is who you voted for. In a democracy, there's no such thing as not voting. You're either too lazy, you don't want to go and understand the truth, you don't want to force yourself. Sometimes we have to choose between what? What we consider to be the lesser of two evils. The lesser of two evils, yeah. Okay? Sometimes. I, it's a horrible position to be in, but you have to have presence. Maybe there's need for a third party. Don't come and tell me you're not going to vote. 50% of the people of St. Lucia didn't vote, brats. 50. Mr. Chastney, you, you just brought up um, Richard's name, Mr. Frederick. Final question. Would Alan Chastney welcome Stevenson King or Richard Frederick back in the UWP? No. In the case of Richard Frederick, that decision was made long ago because Richard has never been able to clarify the visa revocation. And certainly when I see what's happened at Bonanza Land and I see that the behavior continues, there is no place for persons with those values in United Workers' Party. Steve probably committed um, the greatest uh, treachery 
because you stayed in the cabinet for the five years. I knew when I was going to call the elections. The night before the elections, I met with Steve. Told me there was no problems. We went on to NTN. We spoke glowingly about United Workers Party's policy. You then come and you go publicly to say you're going to become a patriot and that you can no longer stomach United Workers Party, and in particular me. You've not been able to provide any evidence of any of the corruption. All the things that you've alleged that there was corruption on, there's no, nothing has panned out. Okay? So in the case of Steve, he's free to make his choice. How do you come back from that? How do you come back from that? How do you, how do you now re-enter uh, the party that you betrayed so much and you said so many nasty things about? So I think, it, I think in hindsight, it was a difficult position to have put Steve in the first place when Steve was replaced by me as the political leader. And then when we found it necessary to replace him as the leader of the opposition with Gil. So in hindsight, you know what? I think that, that that became a bridge too far. But guess what? Because of his longevity in the party, people said, let's stick with Steve. And Steve only came onto the campaign in 2016 very late, a meeting in the boulevard. And within two months, we had elections. Steve was given the most senior ministry, infrastructure, labor. OK? He was given the most money. He was given $30 million a year. He was in charge of the ports, HI Airport, the largest construction project. Nobody, nobody belittled Steve. So I'm just saying to you how, do you, how do you repair that? How do you repair? Because trust is a very, very important thing. So I wish Steve well. I don't hate Steve. Right, Steve has been in politics for the longest time forever. But I'm not so sure. I never, never say never, but the likelihood of him being able to make a re-entry into the party, I think would be difficult. Now, maybe if I'm gone... <laughs> you never said never. You said no. You said no. <laughs> well, I'm just saying to you, if I'm gone, yeah. and that's why there's been a lot of pressure sometimes for me to go. Yeah. Because sometimes maybe it'll be easier. <laughs> because I'm the one of the history. So it's easier for somebody new to come in and say, okay, yes, I'm going to embrace Steve. Yeah. Right? But the party has not reached that point. The party continues to support me um, and the direction we want to go in. But as I said to you, I'm not here to fight for those things. Um, I leave it to the Lord, and let me see what the Lord um, has, it has in destiny for me and for St. Lucia. Here we go. Mr. Shastney, Mr. Alan Shastney, Thank Uncle Shast, thank you for coming through. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you. Um, you will get a call. We will have you back again, because like you said, we have so much too, more to discuss. Too, too long the first time. Let's yeah. talk about democracy in our country, because <laughs> there's a lot, a lot for us to do. Yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. But thank you. Thank, thank you again. You very much. Do a great uh, job. It thank it you. It is now eight minutes. Moving up to the hour of 11, guys. You locked on to Power 97.9 FM. This was the situation in the room with... Uh, the one and only um, Alan Shastney, Mr. Alan Shastney, uh, former Prime Minister of St. Lucia. We will definitely have you back here because, like you said, there's a lot we didn't get to touch on. And um, also, I, I think it was a little bit of a competition with um, trying to get your attention, trying to get my questions in. Although I allow him. He said I was asking. I'm going to act as the Speaker <laughs> of the House next time. Right? Yes. And I'll make sure that you're not disrupted. <laughs> <laughs> and, I I and, I, and, I, and, I, and I won't bring a bazooka. I'll, yeah. I'll, be with you. I'll be with you. You, you, you. All right, folks, that is it for the situation room for us today. Thank you all for those who tuned in and asked your questions. If you go through, awesome. If you did not, we do apologize because, yeah, again, so much, so much to ask and so much to talk about. But we will have um, Mr. Shastney back again because, again, we st a lot to discuss. This is Power 97.9 FM, the new number one. Enter the Situation Room, weekdays from 8.30 a.m. Let's chit-chat a bit, hard talk, the trending topics. Have your say and enter the Situation Room, weekdays from 8.30 a.m. on Power 97.9 FM. Power me up. Power 97.9 FM.